This is our upstairs bathroom. It consists of a tub and shower combination. To the top of the shower, we're looking at 55 inches. From the top of the shower to the ceiling, we're looking at an additional 24 inches, and that 24 inches is covered with sheetrock, which is very susceptible to moisture. In today's video, we're gonna show you how we tiled this area. And we're gonna show you how we transformed the space from this to this. This is the backsplash project I completed here in the kitchen about six months ago. For this project, I used 12 inch by 12 inch peel and stick marble tiles. This project did not require thin set and it did not require grout. Now, for the upstairs shower project that I'm about to start, I'm going to be using 4 inch by 12 inch ceramic tiles. And that project will require thin set and it will require grout. Now I'm in the upstairs bathroom. Um, this is a fiberglass shower tub combination and you can see the top of the shower install right here and then above that is a there's 24 inches and that's all sheetrock and what i want to do here is unlike downstairs where i use peel and stick um tile and they came in 12 by 12 um sheets up here i'm going to use four by 12 um, ceramic tile and of course I'm going to use thin set and, and, and grout but I'm also going to waterproof this before I um, put up the tile and I'm going to do that today and I'll show you how I did I do that uh, one thing is that I did find that this wall right here was out of plumb one inch obviously the tub was one inch shorter than than the wall and instead of fixing it at the time, the sheetrockers just put up the sheetrock and um, it was out of plumb. So I fixed that y yesterday. These are the tools that I use primarily for the thin set. Now over here on the left is a, uh, a notch trowel. And overall it's um, eight and a half inches by um, four inches. And the teeth that you, that you see on it are one quarter inch by one quarter inch by one quarter inch meaning they're one quarter inch wide and they're one quarter inch tall and there's one quarter inch between each one. Now, my research determined that this was the um, um, size I needed for a tile that is four inches by eight inches or, or, or larger. Now, the putty knife, I used that primarily because the trial was just too difficult to get into the into the bucket where I have mixed the thin set and this um, five inch um, putty knife was perfect I could load this up with thin set um, get it on the wall spread it out without dropping it all over the place and then what I did after once once I had it on the wall I just used the teeth of the um, notch trial to, to spread it out it worked great and this is what I would suggest that that, that you guys might want to consider also these are some of the materials that we're going to be using for this project. The large bag here, 44 pounds worth, that's the thin set. Um, when I get ready to mix it up, I will show you guys how I um, mix it. Um, the next bag is the grout. This color is called warm gray. Of course, I purchased a sponge. And this is my tile cutting tool. No, I'm not going to go out and rent a tile cutter. Um, a wet saw or anything like that. Um, this tool right here is all I need. I have about 15 straight cuts, and so it should not be a it should not be a problem. I'm I'm pretty good with this tool, so I shouldn't have a problem. Right here is the box that the um, towel came in. Um, you can see the specifications here. This is the name of the towel. Right, right here, or the company, I guess. And next, what I want to show you is the layout that we're going to be using. Um, we decided that we would just go ahead and lay it out it's, um, and put the spacers in so we would know exactly how this is going to look on, on the wall. This is the back wall right, right here. This is the tile for the back wall. And as I said, the spacers are already in. I have not cut the end pieces yet because I want to, I want to wait until it's on the wall so I know exactly 
what I, I need, but this, this is pretty close here, and this is pretty close to how it's going to look, of course, without the grout. Now, for the two side walls, this is the layout that we're, we're going to use. And as you can see here, this is basically a subway tile um, layout. And um, I think that's a very nice look. I want to show you guys how to cut this tile using this tool. So um, I hope this comes across well. So here we go. There's a cutter right here. And you just hold it in your hand. And you take this cutter and you want to score the top at the point of where you want to cut it. And then you'll see a mark right here. You're not going to see this on camera, but there's a mark right here. And you just center this on the mark. And there you go. Look, look at that cut. Nice and straight, nice and clean. And that's everything that I need. Okay, guys, I want to show you how I cut the hole here. Um, what I did, I had already laid this, this row here. And all I did was I measured up here, which was um, three quarters of an inch to, to, to the bottom. And it was an inch and three quarters right over the top. And then what I did is I measured here over three and one half inches to this side and it was five inches on the other side and all I did was I transferred those measurements right here real, real quick three and three and a half and here and then what I did I came up a half inch and I came up one in, I, did, did I say one and a half or one and three quarters? But anyway, it was somewhere in here. And I just kind of connected the dots. And then I'm going to show you the tool that I used to cut this out. So I'll show you that next. Okay, guys, this is the tool that um, I, I, I purchased. I think it was 25 bucks or something that I used. Then this is what I'm going to use to cut out the hole with. And what I did, all you do is you just put this in your drill here, you tighten it up, and you're, and, you're, and you're ready to go. The problem is you just can't put it down here and start because it's going to wander on you all over the place. So what the company did, the company provides you with this little tool right here. And you can see it slides, you know, to different lengths. And this is meant to hold the drill in place. Let me tighten it up here. And then once you get it where you want, you just, you, you, you just tighten these on the side. And, and, you, and you just start drilling. And it's a diamond uh, coated. And um, you put a little water in there. And you just drill. And you just use this. And you just drill right through. And it, it was a little difficult, and I did practice before I did, I, I did the real tile. So I would suggest that to you also. And so now I'm ready to put up the water. This is what I'm going to use right, right here. And I think it requires two coats, but I'm going to use a roller, and I'm, a paint roller, and I'm just going to put that up to today. And um, I will show you how, how I do this. This is close quarters in here, but I'm going to try to show you guys how I do this. This is the aqua defense liquid or paste, if you will. And I got a paintbrush here, and I'm going to use that first to put this on this joint right here. And they said on joints, put it on very heavy. So that's what I'm doing. So now that I've got it on here, they sell a piece of tape that you can put on. But what I'm going to do is just use this drywall tape here to put it on. And then that will allow me to, to finish the coverage. And I'm going to put this drywall tape on here. 
and that should hold it just and that should hold it nicely while I'm here I might as well go ahead this is such a small area I'm starting to realize that maybe I shouldn't use a a roller here that I should just use this paintbrush that it would be easier just to use it so anyway I'm going to turn the video off now because this gives you guys some idea of how this stuff goes on. After about 10 minutes, I have the first coat of Aqua Defense on. This is the MAPEI, M-A-P-E-I is how you spell it, and it's, it's their product, Aqua Defense. I'm going to let this dry, and then I will put the second coat on. Again, I used a paintbrush for this. I was going to use a roller, but it's such a small area that um, I decided to go ahead and use this. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing this. Karen, can you come around here? And what I've done is I've got mud on the wall, and I'm just going to take this towel, and I'm going to apply it right here. And then I have my spacers in my pocket. And I'm just going to put a spacer here. And you see how these tiles line up with these? Which is a good thing. I don't know how I managed to do that. I guess I just got lucky. No, I didn't. I planned, I planned it out this way. And then what we'll do is we'll put a spacer in the center. Right here. And now, the only thing I have to do is cut a piece from here to here. And I'm good to go. Okay, this is where we are so far. We finished two walls. And, um, you know, I don't think it looks that bad. What do you think, Karen? I think it's beautiful. So we're, we're coming along. The next wall is this one over here. And this has something uh, we got to cut around this pipe. But I ordered a, um, a tool for that. So we should be in good shape there. Okay, this is it for the day. It, we got about five hours in this. Of course, we didn't know what we were doing. We had to learn as we um, as we worked. But um, we're we're really happy with it. Last night, I came back up and I put the pencil trim on. And I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what this looks like. This is just simply half-inch marble um, trim. It's the same kind that I use in the downstairs backsplash project. And... To put it up, all I used was um, Gorilla Glue, and it went up very nicely. And then I came over here to the side, and I put white caulking on it to to finish it off. And this is what it looks like over over here. I'm now ready to apply the grout, and these are the tools that I'm going to use. On the left, I have a rubber float. It's nine by four inches, and the and the and the rubber made the job very easy. The rubber is flexible enough to allow you to press the grout in between the tiles. Now, as far as the sponge is concerned, the primary thing here is to keep it clean. That means you're going to have to change out the water several times. Also, make certain that you wring out the water from the sponge before applying it to the towel. If you don't, you're, you're going to have water running down the towel and, and it's just going to make a real mess. Now, in the footage to come, I'm going to show you guys um, how I prepared the grout. And again, it's just like the thin set. You add the water to the bucket and then you add the mix and then you use the drill to mix it to a consistency of peanut butter or the way that you want it. Next, I'm going to apply the grout and then I'm going to use the sponge to clean the towel. But this float is working very well. It's rubber and it's doing a really good job. And I'm really getting it in these seams here, which is good. So now I'm gonna start wiping it down. Hey 
guys, we're finished. This is it. This is what it looks like. And we're very happy with it. Um, Karen and I have never done a tile job before where, where, where we had to use thin set and grout. Uh, we did the project downstairs, the backsplash project, but that was um, 12 by 12 stick on tiles. So that was just a little bit different. For this one, we had to watch a lot of YouTube videos and those videos were extremely helpful. So thank you, YouTube community, um, for, for, for putting that information out there. And we're hoping that this video is also helpful to you guys. Now, Karen and I did receive a quote for this project for labor only. And that came in at $950. We decided that this is something that we wanted to do ourselves. So we had to purchase tools and those tools came to approximately $60. So in total, we saved about $890 doing it ourselves. Now, we also had to spend an approximately $280 for materials. And those were, and that, that material consisted of tile, of course, thin set, grout, uh, waterproofing material, and, um, and, and pencil trim. Now, this is a project I think anyone could do themselves, and, and I hope that this video will be helpful to you guys. If you like this video, please hit the like button below, and please subscribe to our channel. Good luck with your future project.